Hi there, Matt Filio here in the studio. Um, look forward to spending the next 15 minutes, half an hour or so, um, showing you this painting I'm working on. Uh, right now, uh, it's, it's in progress. This is an 11 by 14 uh, portrait of a, a pastor that is unfortunately now deceased. Uh, it's a commission portrait. And I wanted to capture the realism you know, in a fresh way. Um, so I sketched this freehand and using um, sepia tone colored pencil um, I sealed it all in with clear matte medium so now the, the sketch is ready to paint and what I want to show you today is just the initial layers of painting um, basically um, how to cover over your sketch and this would be using the historic glazing technique so that's a technique that was developed uh, back in the time of Da Vinci and Titian and artists from the Renaissance period and they used many many layers of translucent paint uh, taking the opaque paint and mixing it with a clear medium which back in those times would have been oil um, but today we can use mediums like acrylic and so we take the acrylic paint mix it with clear medium and layer by layer uh, start to transform a sketch into a painting and we really really never lose the details in the sketch um, until the final part of the painting uh, where we're just putting on those opaque layers at the end so join me here and I'll show you how I begin a, a painting uh, the first thing I want to do because this is a new painting session I just like to ask for divine help and I know I can't do this in my own strength um, God is the master artist. He created everything in the world that we say, everything in the world that we see. Excuse me, the sunsets, um, you know, the ocean, uh, the beautiful landscapes, even the beautiful people He's made. He created all of it, and so I just want to ask the master artist for for some help here. Um, Father, I ask that you would bless this portrait. I know I can't do this in my own strength, and and the family um, of this this man that died here, this pastor. You know, father, uh, husband, many other things to those people. Um, th those people are still grieving. And I want to be able to do this portrait, Lord, in such a way um, that it would bless them, that it would encourage them, and that somehow in it, Lord, it would help them uh, just remember this, this guy here and, and how he is such a blessing to them in their lives. And I ask, Lord, all the people, the students watching this, that I'd be able to show them techniques and how to paint. Um, so that it would bless them in their own painting, um, that they would know how to paint an acrylic portrait they're proud of. But just even in this portion of initial glazes, I pray that I would uh, teach this well and that it would work out well in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I have my palette here, all the different colors, my usual colors, uh, raw umber dark, burnt sienna, raw sienna, um, Thalo Blue, which I might not need. That was actually for a different painting, but I'm still using the same palette here. Uh, uh, ultramarine Blue, which is a typical color I use. Alizarin Crimson. Organic Red Orange. Indian Yellow. And Titanium White. And of course, I have some matte medium here, uh, which looks like white paint almost, but it does dry clear. And I'll be mixing into that, making my glazes. So the first thing I want to do is get some contrast between the foreground and the background. You know, the foreground being the subject, and the background just being a nondescript color, um, like you'd have in a portrait studio. Now in the reference photo I have on my Kindle here, it is... Oops. Several pictures there. Um, it's kind of a, a brownish gray. I might make it a little more on the gray side because the client would like me to actually show him in his clerical robes. So you can see I have that in there, the you know the blue and white clerical robes. And so because of that, I don't need to worry about competing with the gray on his suit because that's not going to be in the actual painting. And these are, you know, decisions you can make while you're painting before you even begin. And that's really important. Because if you just start slapping paint around without actually thinking through what you're going to do, 
uh, you might step back, you know, halfway through the painting and think, man, why, why did I use that color? Now I, now I have to go and change it. And you might even be tempted just to, to give up and start all over again. And that's, that's a lot of wasted time and wasted paint and canvas. So it's better just to think through, you know, what are you going to do? What kind of colors are you going to use? That's going to determine what kind of palette you choose. Uh, but in this case, since I'm going to have him wearing his blue clerical robes, the blue and white, then I'm going to give it more of a gray background. And the reason why is it's just going to make his face pop forward and space a little bit more. And that's what I want to do is just give this a little more uh, dimension, a little more depth, and that's one way of doing that. So, yeah, I'm going to choose gray, and to do that, I'm going to take raw umber dark and I just kind of wipe it off to the side next to the medium and I have some on the brushes but in this way I can control how much goes in my mixture rather than adding it all to that dollop of medium I just put it off to the side and then I gradually pull some in and pull some from the medium and kind of mix them right in the center between the two all right, and then I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue just to tone it down. Now I want this to be well, probably a warmer gray. So th there's going to be more than one layer here. This is just going to be one of many different layers. And I can make that a little bit thicker. Basically I'm just starting on the left hand side, then I'm cutting up against the edge the edge of the subject here. And we'll just work our way over. And you, you can just pull the paint over. You want to scrub it into the canvas texture at first. And then just gradually, gradually lift up using very sweeping strokes to smooth it out. Cut up along the edge. It can overlap a little bit in the areas with uh, darker values. And in the areas with lighter values, you're going to want to... Um, avoid hitting those. I'm not going to worry about really shading this too much. I just overall want to cover it with an even coat. We'll add some shading later. And that just begins to tone the background and causes some of the highlights in his face to pop out. And. Um, and I think that's all right to do that. Now, with this drying in the background, I don't want to go over that. In fact, once it sets up, you want to leave it alone. Don't overbrush it. Um, once you have it relatively smooth, just let it dry. And then go ahead and work on something else. So a large area that I can attack right now, I guess I kind of think of this like a military campaign, but... That's just the way I think. Anyway, something that I can just attack and get into right now as I'm on my way of getting this painting to its destination would be um, coloring in the blue of his clerical robes. So I'm going to rinse this brush off quick. I have that behind the camera. Um, that's just the way I have my studio set up. Now that that's all rinsed off, I'm going to grab some fresh medium because I don't want that brown to interfere. Just squeeze that out on the palette. And let's kind of look at the color here from one of these other photos. Now I think this is um, in reverse, so I actually might need to get a photo made of this that's reverse somehow through Photoshop so I can see it at its proper angle but just for this purpose 
for the initial layer it'll be fine. I just want to pay attention to the color of the blue. It looks like it's more of a purplish indigo kind of a blue. And so with that um, I'm going to choose ultramarine blue. Again just dab it right on the corner. Work our way in. Mixing the two together and controlling the amount. Notice I didn't mix it into the whole amount at once but just a portion of it and then grab a little bit more as I need to. But this should be enough for an initial layer. You want to start off going pretty light. And then after you get a few layers under your belt, you can get a bit darker. Now if you've watched some of my videos before, my technique, you might notice that my sketch is a little more prominent than usual. I didn't do a toning layer on this or a muting layer. So I didn't mute my sketch down, I just sealed it in with clear medium. I did not put a layer of white and raw sienna over the top. And I'm just going to try it this way and see how it works. So I really like the sketch and I kind of like the character of it and it might show up a little bit in the final painting. And I don't really mind if it does, although if it looks too grainy I might cover over some of the, the roughness of the sketch with more opaque paint. And that's, that's not too hard to do. But anyway, this uh, covers that particular layer and now we have two layers in here. The next step will be to go into the face and we can start blocking in some of the values uh, for his hair, um, for the shadows in the face. And that's the main thing. I'm going to use a smaller brush. That was a one inch flat, but now I'm going to use, I'm going to use like a half inch flat if I can find a good brush. And I'm just going to basically switch back to this other area of medium and paint and we'll use raw umber dark and just mix something that's a little bit darker. This is maybe about 80% medium, 20% paint. And I tell you what, I'm going to get even a little thicker than that just because I, uh, this, this is a very dark value. And with this sketch I kind of delineated where the major uh, shadows and values should go and so I just follow basically what I did in the sketch. Now I'm going to twist my brush and use just the side of it, just the angle uh, keeping it at about a 45 degree angle resting my fingers on the canvas for um, increased stability which is just one of the things you can do with acrylic paintings that you can't do with oil and I like that and we'll also go over this side as well. And basically we just want to block in those major values. You can see them here. People wonder how do you paint hair and it's not really any trickier than painting, you know, water or a glass like a pitcher with water in it or uh, clothing texture or uh, doily or you know any anything you might think is tricky um, it's really just seeing the values some things will take more time because they have more complex shapes of those values <coughs> excuse me that equal up to a surface of a painting um, but you know it's basically just seeing those different values and representing them on a canvas people with curly hair it's going to be a little more challenging than painting somebody with straight hair uh, because straight hair you you have these large areas of flat color but when they're curly all the different curls catch different portions of light and reflect that light and we see that and that's what tells us that they're curls but they're very complicated to paint because there's more um, intricate shapes that you have to capture 
So it's not necessarily that it's harder, like, oh, I'm going to really struggle to do this. It's more of how much time is it going to take to paint this accurately. And here his hair, his hair is uh, not going to be too difficult, I don't think, because it's relatively flat. We have some striations there, but it's not curly, so that's not going to be a challenge. Overall, I don't think it's going to be a huge challenge to paint this. Not that I want to get cocky or proud or anything. Just There's some that I've done that I think, oh man, this is going to be a challenge. This one here, I don't think will be like that, especially with God's help. Um, hopefully I can just kind of, you know, just enjoy the process. And, um, but there are some things, of course, that, you know, do take more time than others. So what I'm doing is just blocking in the values for um, the contrast between his collar and then going into his neck. And I'm just using the side of the brush so I can really get some control on it and just fan that out over the surface. Now the fact that I already have a lot of shading done in my sketch really, really helps. And I recommend you do that um, in your own sketches. That you, as much as possible, start shading in the values so that you know where to go in the painting. Now you don't have to do it the way I do it, it's just this is the way I teach it. I think it's a cool way to go and um, really makes your painting process a lot easier. But I started off as a drawer. I drew for many, many years before I painted. And so I guess that's just what I'm most used to. Although I have been painting for over 20 years. But when I was a kid, I drew for many, many years before I learned how to do acrylic painting. So I'm just using a very light touch here, just, just dabbing in the surface, um, kind of tapping over it with my finger and blending it. It's a really easy way to blend is just by touching it with your finger and you can just dab the surface a little bit and take the harshness off the edge of your glaze. You will get some paint on your finger, but hey, this is non-toxic. That's what soap and water is for, so not a big deal. Using just a little bit here, I'll wipe some off on the side because I had too much on my brush. But again, I just want to get those major value structures. Um, let's also add a little bit to the side right here, going into his crow's feet wrinkles, which aren't too apparent, but just that uh, area of his eye socket and around his eyeballs and eyebrows and then going into the temple of his forehead. We just want to get this shadow blocked in. We're going to kind of dab it off on the top. And then <clears throat> we can maybe also get a little bit on the side of his nose. I just got to keep in mind that the shadows there are a little warmer in color and so this raw umber dark being kind of a cooler brown, a little cooler in tone, isn't necessarily going to be the best option for that. So I have to make sure I don't go too dark with those shadows. But let's work in to the eyebrows just a little bit. Again, just dabbing it in there because I want to be able to pick out those little shapes. There's very intricate shapes here that we want to see. And it's not, it's not as simple as, as you would think. A lot of times um, I see beginning artists um, oversimplifying shapes. You know, they'll take something that's very complex and just tend to smooth it out too much. And they take the irregularities out of it. And that really can lessen the realism. <clears throat> and that's not something you want to do. You want to see those intricate shapes without over enhancing them, without over exaggerating them. Now, I think he's going to have a shadow down here from the clerical 
robes, the vestments. So let's go over those shadows. Let's also go over these shadows just a bit. We'll start integrating the whole sketch into a painting. Just got to get a quick sip of water here. All right, <clears throat> now, um, could go, I don't know if that's, let's let this dry first before I hit it with another layer. I tell you what, I think I'm going to call this, well, I'm going to do one more thing, then I'll call the video done. Let's just add a little something to his eyes using a small round brush just to start integrating that area with paint as well and his nose and that those little dark areas by his mouth where he's smiling it's in shadow all right now with that I'm going to call this layer done so I hope you enjoyed this video so far uh, thank you so much for watching and I'm going to have this entire painting, um, at least the highlights of the progress step by step, um, created into a course as I record this year. Um, so you can see the entire thing at realisticacrylic.com. Uh, Realistic Acrylic Portrait School is where I teach artists who want to paint people well, uh, learn how to paint portraits they can be proud of. Um, so go to realisticacrylic.com uh, for more tutorials like this. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know how it helps. And uh, God bless. I'll, I'll talk to you soon.